So, uh, Mickey, uh, this is Amer. Uh, I'm a host on Better Tech. I'm also a founder and CEO of Techcel, which is a professional services company. On Better Tech, we interview uh, tech visionaries like yourself to find more about where the world is going with tech and how things are coming along. So, welcome. Welcome on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, so let's start by getting a bit of introduction about yourself, about your journey so far before we dive a little deeper into our other topics. Awesome. So my background is coming from uh, engineering, uh, went to uh, entrepreneurship, uh, starting a first recession in 2008, kind of uh, allowed me to uh, wear many hats in the in the first startup I joined. Um, which led me kind of to, to eventually uh, found my first company because I realized that uh, I'm passionate about taking technology and see how technology can help uh, businesses to, to kind of, uh, deliver better services to the customers. So the first startup was uh, around web uh, experience management that was uh, eventually acquired by Marketo. I, lo I joined Marketo. Um, uh, as as an entrepreneur, and I was always uh, expecting that it's a larger company. And as we grew, we had more sense about you know product market fit, and and things would be different. But I saw that, and it doesn't matter. Bro, I, I have to admit, I use Marketo uh, <laughs> as a business guy myself. So so good to know that someone talked yeah. to yeah. And and Marketo, I, I ended up uh, leading the the entire Marketo suite uh, development team, and and basically um and influencing uh, obviously the the roadmap and everything and i i discovered that uh when i took over the role uh and we had to kind of build first the roadmap for innovation um i realized that we have a very little clue of what's going on with our customers um mm -hmm. we kind of uh, speak with them we're trying to understand and then but from data perspective uh we had very little insight um and it was an amazing ride with Marketo for so three years. Eventually, uh, Marketo got acquired by Adobe. Um, but uh, in that journey, uh, I realized that, and I was always interested to see, is there a science or is this an art to really find product market fit? And how can I help other entrepreneurs uh, build better products? And um, I think that my first startup, I kind of uh, realized there's something that I can do uh, to, to change the way I go to market. So my first startup, Inside Era, I actually we actually build some tools to better demonstrate the product, and that was really a, um, a game changing event because. What, no, what, what was the name of that startup? I probably missed that. Uh, the first startup was named Inside Era, which was uh, about web personalization. It was help help you deliver the right message at the website uh, for anonymous visitors as well. So okay. we were able to infer uh, your location, your industry, your uh, search terms, some, all those signals, uh, your lead uh, information, and then in real time, uh, put a specific uh, relevant uh, personalized contact on your website to help you convert more and just nurture users through relevant uh, content without using any any code. So that was like, uh, so for us, um, how do you really uh, effectively go and, and expand or, or basically or go to market uh, can be more effective. We were based in Tel Aviv uh, and our main market was US. Uh, so we had to be very efficient in terms of the way we go to market. We can do just enterprise sales, meet customers. So what we've done is, is building um, a, a feature that helps us demonstrate the solution on any website. So uh, instead of doing like uh, a very long sales process and slides and everything, we would just uh, get the CMO on the line on the VP of marketing and just show them on their own website live in few minutes, how do we personalize their pro their, their website? So they got the aha moment in, in okay. two minutes. Um, so basically that was a first signal, like, you know, you can use your product as a very effective tool. If you can show the outcome to your customers, mm -hmm. that's going right. to help you a lot in terms of as uh, versus like slides and the way the sales would pitch it and things like that. So that was like, uh, one of the elements that kind of changed the way I think about product and SaaS. Uh, it was 10 years ago. So it was quite a, 
early stage in terms of like understanding that SaaS is going to be the reality moving from on-prem to cloud. So we we were on the right wave. Uh, joining Marketo, we basically, I saw that the issue is just bigger, the pain of understanding your customers, leading with your products, um, messaging to your end users to be able to influence their behavior is becoming even bigger challenge and opportunity. So as, as leading Marketo, I realized that number one, still we have like, uh, we don't have an effective tool to, to market to our customers. We still we obviously have email, but email is less and less effective, uh, obviously. And um, also the end users are becoming uh, one of the decision makers. Eventually they, they would never um, renew if, uh, if the end user is not happy, right? So uh, usually- And Marketo uh, itself as a product, which can potentially be used for a marketing-led growth rather than a product-led Correct. growth. Correct. So usually uh, the, the, the evolution was from sales-led growth to marketing-led growth. Yeah. And then because the notion was like, you know, we basically, there was always a misconception or myth about those transitions. People always take it to the, to the extreme. So well, sales-led, coming marketing-led, they said, you know what? We don't need sales. We can do everything with marketing. Um, and then marketing will basically nurture users to understand and they will buy. Uh, in reality, it's not necessarily true. Marketing definitely help you scale. Uh, but it, it, when, when customers uh, pay a certain amount of uh, money and the use case is becoming more complex, they obviously need a partnership from sales um, and, and customer success and so forth. So at, at Marketo, I, I realized that, you know, um, the challenge uh, of, of data, the challenge of um, messaging uh, is something that is even bigger. And I decided to uh, start a company called Uptrinsic that is combining true product analytics. Because uh, again, like analytics is something that uh, today still most solutions are very web focused. And in product, it's just very different in terms of things you want to measure, the way you look at the data. Um, so product managers, for example, wants to not rely on engineering. And second, they want to understand the areas, you know, the where's the smoke and then pinpoint the, the, the fire because they have a lot of users and they have to take decision based on the majority of the patterns and behavior. How can you surface that to them in a very effective way? Because usually analytics is like, show me funnel, show me conversion, show me like 10 events. And with product, you have like 500 features, you have like a lot of structure. So uh, that was one of the things that we need the better analytics to drive better insights. Um, and it has to be very effective. You cannot put, you'll never prioritize engineers to go and start tagging or putting events into your uh, analytics. Second, and how do we how do we make that messaging to users more effective? Because in the subscription business, you have to have customers achieve their outcome to renew. And what sure. happens in many cases that you put a lot of resources, human resources, to help customers onboard and renew. So this is where we uh, I realized that, that the solution has to have um, messaging and analytics in the same solution because you have to turn those insights into action and truly provide a segmented uh, messaging you can do in real time in your product to meet them uh, where where you are. So that was my journey uh, with uh, with the second startup. So what made you shift from? Uh, this uh, app transact to gain insights. So my so when I started up transact, it was uh, and it's much uh, uh, sometimes much more fun and easier to to uh, start your second startup. You get a lot of funding and uh, you have a clear understanding where you want to go. Um, and um, so one of the things I, I did is is uh, writing a book about the topic product like growth, mastering product like growth because. Again, my, my journey was all about uh, how do you deliver better experience, starting from marketing, uh, evolving to product, uh, based on the, the big uh, change and revolution to move to SaaS. This is where you know experience and product experience and renewal, the whole life cycle is becoming truly the goal for companies. Um, I realized that uh, as most uh, uh, of the market is trying to to interpret new trends is again like marketing uh, led, product led. People thought that's going to be like, okay, you're going to use your product. You don't need any sales or customer success, um, and you're going to build a very successful product. And 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 that's the that's the formula. Uh, when I wrote the book, 
I realized that, you know, actually you need to have a combination. It's just a, a shift for your company to be more uh, customer journey oriented, like sales, marketing. They need to understand the adoption journey of the user. Um, and it's not just suddenly you have a magic uh, uh, tool that suddenly can acquire, uh, retain and expand user just by the product. I think it's a misconception. I think that uh, that if you're you have a great uh, uh, usable tool, it's it's mostly um, uh, relevant for areas that people already understand the space. So you can do it only in a very mature space. But um, doesn't matter how usable and great your product is, if it's too simple, uh, another solution will come in and eat your lunch. You have to also go up market and you also and to grow through your install base means selling more product to your install base. And once you sell multi-product and customers expand, this is where customer success uh, is a critical element in that uh, uh, growth because you have to blend human touch uh, or strategic discussion with your customers while you serve the early part of the journey in low touch. And that's the balance and, and meeting uh, Gaines at Nick Mera, uh, we realized that there's like something here to really build uh, a growth flywheel, as we say, right? Yeah, the, the whole uh, economy is moving towards efficiency and towards uh, building a flywheel, meaning can you uh, uh, at scale acquire customers, onboard them in a more efficient way uh, and using this digital journey and then as they get more value, can you expand? This is where customer success comes in. So we, we figured that the two solutions, Gainsight, which is the number one platform for customer success, and Uptrinsic, which is the leading uh, uh, experience platform from technology perspective, can really uh, build something stronger together. Uh, and I'm happy mm -hmm. to see that Gainsight, basically our, our message today is, is durable growth for companies, which is becoming way more relevant in, in this uh, economic volatility time. So we decided kind of to, uh, to go after this uh, m and and joining Gainsight was fantastic because not right now we feel that the market is starting to understand that that's how you're going to ma manage your uh, uh, SaaS solution today. Like the way you're going to deliver the customer experience uh, that you expect is around the value for customers. And you need to use technology to help customers help themselves. But at some point, you also need to be more strategic with your customers as the as they use more of your tools. And I believe that's kind of the future of successful companies. And we want to be the tool that they choose to help them grow. I can I can surely tell you that you are someone who is so passionate about this product-led growth and customer journey that you can spend the next two days talking about it. By the way, what is the name of the what is the name of your book? Uh, I, I really I, I think I should read that. Uh, Mastering Product Led Growth. It's available. At, yeah, it's available okay. to download for free in, in gainsight.com. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, and there's okay. also a, a copy in, in Amazon, but uh, you're able to to just get it from gainsight.com. It's it's truly about, and I I, I published that in 2017, and uh, last year I published a, kind of a, an updated version, but uh, it's kind of uh, touching marketing, uh, product management. Um, growth and, and, and success and sales and how they should uh, think about this new journey. Yeah, I, I mean, so one of the, a few of the myths is that that because of product-led growth, you probably do not need marketing and sales, which is essentially not the right way of thinking about it. The functions are, are still there, but you have to prioritize one over another, figure out that how your product is deriving the customer journey, which will eventually lead to your marketing and eventually lead to your uh, selling technique. So I guess this is all product -led growth is all about. So so talk to us a little bit more about product -led growth. I mean, everybody is right now seems to be uh, on the bandwagon of product -led growth. Who are the top companies who are really killing it with their product -led growth strategies in your opinion and why their strategy is so good? Yeah, I think it's uh, first it's it's uh, it's it's such a I feel so fortunate to to see that happening you know because sometimes you're kind of uh bet on a a a, a space of things and then it, it just takes a while for that space or framework to to happen or it does it never happens so product like growth when i spoke about it 2016 
2017, I felt like maybe I'm the crazy person in the room because nobody, especially in B2B SaaS, like now we're, you know, no way our product is going to be used by, you know, free, free trial or freemium or also like expansion with the product is just going to be felt to them as just not reasonable to do. And today you see like, mega companies, any size of company, uh, product-led growth is, is an initiative to go after, which is uh, really an interesting uh, play, uh, but it's coming from more maturity as well. Uh, I think companies today understand it's not just free trial or freemium, it's kind of a, um, a holistic uh, uh, strategy and they, they obviously look at the retention. How can we better retain customers with product-led? How can we just use the, the channel of the product and signals from the users to drive better decisions. So I think that that's kind of uh, unfortunate to see that we're the, the trend is is really happening right now. And companies that did fantastically, even back then, uh, is, is Intercom and, and Drift, for example. And we see Monday.com is doing that uh, very effectively. Um, those are kind of the more uh, complex tools. There's also Calendly, which is a fantastic uh, tool. But again, it's, it's more simple tool right now and now adding a lot of valuable features to their roadmap. Um, so there's like the classic Expensify cloud, uh, uh, you know, Calendly or the Slack of the world, but you can see that some of them are now building those massive enterprise features like Slack, for example, as a fantastic ecosystem and, and, and enterprise feature. So they they realized that it's not gonna be enough uh, to kind of, and they didn't just uh, keep uh, or kind of uh, stay in a comfort zone. They said, okay, the first, Hockey stick was fantastic, but now we have to build something to make our customer stay and build some moat. Those companies realize that product -like growth is kind of the one of the things you do to, to scale, but you have to have like a more strategic uh, uh, way to, to uh, uh, grow your install base. So I think those companies will stay for a long term uh, because they truly understood the 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 strategy, but also the fact that eventually your customers are buying product, and you need to build more for them to kind of uh, you can, need to continue to innovate, um, and then you'll you'll build your customer success motion as well because eventually again once you become a big customer, you need to have this human touch and all that. So you can see now that they are hiring their salespeople, uh, the enterprise sales, for example, they are building those enterprise motions and modes. It's not, they didn't just uh, um, were, you know, they were very, very successful, but they didn't stay in their comfort zone. And it's just going to that other uh, part in their journey. And I feel that is a company, these companies that do those two plays, like the low touch and high touch, are the one that will be most resilient over time. Uh, that's my bet. Nikki, uh, I, these are the companies that are really killing it with their strategies. Let's assume that I am a SaaS founder today and uh, I'm building a product, I have a wonderful idea and I that I believe is, a, is going to change the world. Uh, I mean, you have wrote, uh, you have written a book on PLG already. Can you, can you give me a kind of a framework or steps one, two, three, four, five, six that I should think of while doing this PLG strategy that I'm, I'm a founder, got some seed round, build a product or think of building a product. What should be my next 10 steps or five steps if I want to embark on that journey? Yeah, I think, you know, my opinion again, it's uh, um, from my experience building two companies from scratch and then also a lot running very large uh, teams um, in a public company like Marketo, very iconic, that grew very, very fast to like, a thousand customers, six thousand customers. That was really exponential growth. I, I've seen uh, both ends. I feel like when you start your solution, um, one of the, be the best uh, approach, in my view, is starting uh, obviously focusing on the pain point. But um, my one of my early hires was actually were UX, a, a strong UX person that can really uh, sit with you and uh, kind of sketching those designs of how do you address this pain point. Uh, before you start writing a lot of code, you are able to today with very effective tool visualize, you know, the flow of the product. Yeah, you can so, use Figma, you can use Envision to really create yeah. all these 
user experience connected user experience and see how it, how it's working out okay exactly and then then you basically have the design partners customers that you truly show them something visual it's not just enough to interview them and which is very important to do before you you build because as as a founder and entrepreneur you get to fall in love with your product in the, in, in the way you solve that very quickly before truly getting that feedback right once mm-hmm. you it's like engineers once they write the code and then they kind of do a design review once they invested like a kind of couple of lines of code they're gonna try to kind of stick to the the first investment yeah. they've done uh, so i think it's really important uh, to be open-minded uh, in many of the early stage solutions i had some hypothesis and and i sometimes just switch to understand for when i launched up Trinsic, for example i thought i'm gonna go after market automation i came from marketo marketo is gonna become you know an enterprise solution there's an opportunity to go and 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 do a marketing growth through product but i realized that when i did that that still marketing is still very viable to drive top of funnel and the product uh, growth is is a new thing so i also so you learn that if you iterate and open and be open minded and you have and when you design a product and solution you focus on the pain point and you're able to show uh, and and work with design partners that they actually feel the pain and they see that and you can discuss uh, um, you know even even pricing strategy things that you kind of uh, think uh, uh, in, in is an after uh, thought it's something that you can do today with these tools early um, I don't need, think that necessarily you can you need to start with product led it really depends if if you are going to disrupt a market that is already like for example, project management was disrupted by Monday. People understand and uh, you know, know what product management is. So I think PLG is table stakes. You have to come with a very easy to use. Even let's say you're building a next cloud. Cloud has a, you know Amazon, Google Cloud, Azure. These are uh, complex solutions. A ton of solutions there, but they have to do product led because the the engineers that they use it, they know what to expect. They can they can handle it. Uh, so that's if you do go after an existing market where the market knows and have some expectation, product led is a fantastic way to start. If you are creating a new category, product led is the last thing you should do. That like you you need to figure okay. out product market fit. Um, only at certain stage uh, you want to start doing it. But in any case, starting with measurements, like really building a data driven culture from day one, is really important. As you start your startup, like launching the product, feedback is the first thing I would use, like truly like not NPS, but truly questions. Uh, first, watching your customers use the product, which I do today, every day, even when we have thousand customers still watching the way they consume the product is really, really important and learning experience. Obviously, if you're launching a product, start using it, but you can also start using those in-app surveys or any means to collect that feedback to continuously learn and improve and just do a better job with your core features. And to me, it's like really nailing uh, your core functionality in a much, much better way uh, is much more innovative than throwing a set of crazy features. Um, so it's just like my, my advice is like usually um, the, understand your market, uh, understand the timing in your market. One of the things I see a lot of entrepreneurs go into is like, Going to a market when the market is not there yet, fantastic solution got got buried because the the timing of them you cannot control the timing, right? So understanding the pain and the timing and a priority from the end customer is one of the major decision points you want to do. It, it's the thing thing I did in 2012, like uh, I re, oh, 2010. It's like when I built first my first startup, I thought actually to go after what I do today, the, the product experience. I realized that the market is is mostly on the marketing yet. So I we kind of pivoted to focus on the web experience. And it took six years later to go after the product experience. So if I if I stick to my previous solution uh, or hypothesis, I would try to build Gainsight PX 10 years ago, and that's not gonna be the best timing. And it's just something that you you want to really, really truly with yourself understand is the market ready? And it's a bet. You know, sometimes you see signals. And it's always fall. a bet. I mean, you have to figure yeah. that out. So yeah. what could be really the challenges in PLG and uh, which companies or uh, potentially startups should never go for PLG? 
Oh, sorry, what was the first question? What, what could be the challenges in a product yeah. led growth model and probably which which are the companies which are not who are not suited really suited to this product led growth model you mentioned yeah. one that if you're inventing a new category that probably you you shouldn't be doing that uh, there could or are there could be any other challenges yeah i think challenges is is uh, um uh, i think the big challenge that i see now is uh, you're not putting uh, someone to own uh, growth or product like growth. Usually companies start with a virtual team, which is great to start. Uh, and um, it's kind of in between. So when you ask who owns growth, many companies don't necessarily know. So it's between product ops, CS ops, marketing ops, uh, something it's mar- sometimes it's marketing, sometimes it's customer success, sometimes it's product management. Um, the more much than that, the issue might be that eventually nobody's doing that, um, you know, to, to the full end, to the full potential, because they have more tactical, they try to do it with one and done thing, and it's never truly optimized. And that's something that we also are learning in games that like you have to go all in. So I think eventually successful companies um, in product led, they put someone to really drive that. And usually mm-hmm. it's a growth PM, people that usually coming from demand gen background, but deeply understand the product and can really focus on adoption metrics and, and, and business KPIs. They will always okay. prioritize driving adoption. If you don't do that long term, you're not truly uh, going to be successful with product led because the more you invest in that and you don't put someone to tr- do this course functional alignment, but also driving this Someone who, who understands demand gen as well as product management can really own the growth. Sure, if you do not have that person or that function, then probably you shouldn't be doing it, right? Yeah, I think you can definitely, we'll still be benefiting from leveraging the product because obviously in-app, we've seen that in-app is, is 5x more effective than email channel. Um, we're so, it's, it's you're going you're gonna to benefit from it, but, uh, but I think it's uh, something that... Uh, Eventually, if you're not evolving to have someone on that, uh, it's not going to be as successful. Um, and companies that that are not uh, relevant for product like growth, those companies that still are uh, the decision makers or the decision process is top down. You know, it's kind of uh, um, and and the, the audience is is kind of captive audience, and it's like not um, so heavy solutions that again it's top down it requires like it's a change across all the company and it's a massive implementation cycle uh this is where um a, a leading with the product is not going to be um, material those companies you focus on mainly the retention and expansion using the product so product signals it's a master for them as well um but not truly fully plg from acquisition to retention to expansion because again they're uh way too heavy and the decision making is is kind of top down and and the end user still doesn't have a voice once the end user has a voice in most areas the end users uh the bot their bosses is not going to enforce a solution if they say hey we try to use the tool for a year we hate this uh, today, I think employees will actually leave their job if you're forcing them to use a tool, on a daily tool like B2B tool, which they don't like. They might just, you know, quit their job at some point because they feel like they're not productive, they're not effective, they're not learning the right elements. So uh, that's something that uh, uh, I'm seeing more. So less and less companies and areas uh, are going to be uh, not relevant for PLG. I see that most uh, spaces and solutions eventually are going to be relevant because it's very hard to survive if you're not reducing friction in acquisition and we see you know what we do today like we we buy cars you know through a mobile app right that's like the experience of buying car uh is so different um and they prove that you can actually take a a very dramatic or deeper decision financially and and you know what through the app and we even see it in the real estate that you can actually see uh, houses and and really understand the experience and and help you drive those decisions. So I think it's it's definitely changing uh, uh, most most industries. Thank you, wonderful. So last question. So we can before we wrap up. So how do you see gain insights really crushing 
the world in the next one year? Where where are you going with that? Uh, that's a uh, that's uh, our uh, our bet our in our passion and gain side. I feel like uh, we're uh, trying to help uh, uh, businesses um, uh, grow and build durable growth, um, and I think it's like something that uh, uh, is we, we put as the kind of the first uh, mission and, and vision because we we think that most companies will need to uh, build a, a first, a better understanding of the customer journey, the digital journey, a uh, better understanding of their um, experience and delivering great experiences for their end customers towards a building a more sustainable and durable uh, growth business, which means that all the efficiencies around uh, when, when customers can have a self-service or need self-service, they'll be able to use it. But when they need this human touch, high touch, they'll be able to orchestrate that. So we believe that in the future, you'll see more and more companies um, looking at area that can improve the experience uh, from product, from the way they manage customer success, they may, the way they manage marketing and sales. Um, and we bet that on this future where the digital journey in the product and outside the product is gonna be managed in more effective way to deliver better customer experience. Um, and in financial crisis like that, it's even more, um uh visible to understand that okay now it's we're going to prioritize how do we scale how do we change the ratio between number of accounts and customer success how can we bring faster and better leads to our sales so efficiency is becoming high priority especially in, in market volatility and if we're really uh working hard to help companies scale um and, and so they can survive those downturns um, and eventually also deliver what customers expect. And that's our bet in the future. And it's also the journey we in Gainside are going through. Um, one of our products is offering free trial. The second one doesn't offer, but it will offer in the future. So we are also going through that uh, transformation and, and simplify and usability is one of our uh, top priorities in the customer success platform, for example. And we've done an amazing, amazing investment in the past year and you could see how if if a year ago you go into the solution, it's it's still very advanced and complex. Today we have a lot of improvements and the the way the UI is structured, inform data information was a huge investment. So we are not just pitching that, we actually are also uh eating our own dog food uh, and learning a ton on the way. Um and also almost uh, uh eminently we, we also understand how important is the human touch as well, especially as companies serve larger customers. You know, you have small customers, you have larger customers. You need that human touch and low touch blend. And we see it uh, firsthand that this is a, a the blend that, you know, companies should also offer as well. And again, we always try to give back to community and contribute a lot in thought leadership. Uh, we feel like, you know, that is something that companies should also do, help other companies, things you learn, things you apply, share that with other companies. Um, so we, we do we did offer um, recently a, a free product-led growth course. Uh, and also, uh, we also gave the platform for free for that course as well, so they can actually learn. But we invested a lot in the content to help the, the product managers learn what it is, what they can should learn about. Uh, so it was, again, heavy investment from our side just to help uh, growth PMs understand the space and great partnership with Product School to offer that for free on their platform as well. Uh, so I think it's also uh, another aspect to, to think about how can you help uh, other companies or communities uh, learn uh, what you've learned in the past you know, few years. Wonderful, McGee, and thank you very much for all this wonderful insights into product-led growth as well as gain insights. So I'm sure it was all uh, it is all very valuable for everyone who is going to listen to it. And I'm I, I mean you are a champion in product led growth, so I, I know you can go on and on. But in the interest of time, we'll just uh, stop it over here, and uh, we'll definitely come back for another session to, to have more of your thoughts on it. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you for having me again.